Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is recurrent angioedema without wheels. Definition and nomenclature. Angioedema is described as a deep, localized, and self-limiting swelling of the skin and submucosal tissue due to a temporary increase in vascular permeability resulting from vasoactive mediators. So angioedema due to any cause will be a deep and localizing swelling of loose skin and submucosal tissue due to temporary increase in vascular permeability. Angioedema with wheels is a common occurrence of spontaneous and inducible urticarias. But the angioedema without wheels is a specific condition that is seen in bradykinin induced angioedemas and hereditary angioedemas. The bradykinin induced angioedemas may cause fatal laryngeal obstruction or bowel obstruction, and sometimes presents as acute abdomen also. So it can become a medical emergency. The mast cell mediator induced angioedema affect the skin and oropharynx, but laryngeal involvement is exceptional and bowel is never affected. Here are the few characteristics of angioedema without wheels. The first is it involves the subcutaneous and submucosal tissue rather than the dermis. And the most common site are lips, eyelids, and genitals due to laxity of subcutaneous tissue. Individual lesions can be single or multiple. Appear suddenly, itching is absent, and lesion lasts for few hours to several days. Hereditary angioedema is one of the most important angioedemas without wheel. It's a rare disorder that accounts for less than 2% of angioedema without wheels. It is always bradykinin mediated and usually linked to C1 esterase inhibitor deficiency or impaired function. So hereditary angioedema is associated with C1 inhibitor uh, deficiency or impaired functions. The patient with angioedema due to acquired C1 inhibitor deficiency due to ACE inhibitor induced angioedema and idiopathic angioedema are not induced by mast cell mediators. So all these kinds of angioedemas are not mast cell mediated, but bradykinin mediated. Hereditary angioedema is defined into three types. The type one have reduced C1 inhibitor level. Type two have a normal or raised level of C1 inhibitor, but it is functionally inactive. And type three has normal C1 inhibitor, functional C1 inhibitor problem and a positive family history. So the first one, it has a reduced C1 inhibitor. Second may have a normal C1 inhibitor, but uh, functional inactivity. The number three is normal C1 inhibitor, functional deficiency and positive family history. Then few words about is inhibitor induced angioedema. It is again a bradykinin induced angioedema without wheels. And it is uh, caused by angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors resulting in reduced bradykinin metabolism. Most cases develop within three weeks of commencing the treatment but can occur any time later. It is occasionally with angiotensin receptor blockers. 
angioedema affects predominantly the face and oropharynx. Symptoms may be severe and laryngeal involvement may be life threatening. Epidemiology. The mast cell mediated angio induced angioedema is by far the commonest presentation of angioedema representing about 10% of the patients. ACE inhibitor induced angioedema affects 1% of the population. Hereditary angioedema affects one in 50,000 of general population. Accord C1 inhibitor deficiency is extremely rare and hence its prevalence is unknown. The mast cell mediated angioedema present in four to five decades. More than 75% of patients with hereditary angioedema have their first attack by 15 years. ACE inhibitor angioedema obviously occur in older people when this uh, kind of therapy is given for hypertension. Next, mast cell mediated angioedema and ACE inhibitor induced angioedema are more common in women. Associated diseases, thyroid antibodies are common with spontaneous urticaria. A weak association between hereditary angioedema, Joggenel syndrome and SLE has been reported. Pathophysiology. Mast cell mediated mediator induced angioedema are due to mast cell degranulation as evidenced by their response to H1 antihistamines. Some cases may be due to functional autoantibodies, infections or food intolerance and stress has often been a trigger. ACE inhibitor induced angioedema mainly inhibits kinase 2 resulting in, a, in an increase in bradykinin and pathophysiology is more complicated and it's not required to be discussed here. Hereditary angioedema, C1 inhibitor is a natural inhibitor of activated first component of complement that is calicrin and the fibrolytic and coagulation system. The attacks are triggered by stimuli that consume the deficient inhibitor, complement C2, C4, and CH50 are nearly always low during, after, and between the attacks. Complement C4 may be used as an initial screening test. There is, however, no correlation between the severity of the dis disease and the laboratory abnormalities, that is, the decrease in complement level. Angioedema due to acquired C1 inhibitor deficiencies, two type are recognized. Type 1 is due to continuous activation of complements by lymphoproliferative disease, inducing paraproteinemia due to increased catabolism of C1 inhibitor. Type 2 is due to autoantibodies that recognized C1 inhibitor and inactivate it. So it is induced by infection. There is some evidence that Hereditary angioedema may be destabilized by Helicobacter pylori infection of the stomach. Genetics type 1 and type 2 hereditary angioedema are inherited as autosomal dominant trait. Environmental factors. All type of hereditary angioedema are aggravated by estrogen in contraceptives and hormone replacement therapy, but not by NSAIDs, which are usually potentiator in uh, inducible or spontaneous urticarias. Clinical features. Mast cell mediator, mediator induced angioedema present in the same as, uh, in, as it present uh, as the angioedema occurs in spontaneous urticarias. Oropharynx is involved, but it is unusual. Laryngeal edema is exceptional, and abdominal angioedema does not occur. So the mast cell induced angioedema usually results in swelling that is limited to eyelids, genitals, and the lips. ACE inhibitor induced angioedema. Swelling is confined to face and oropharynx. Laryngeal edema may occur and can be fatal without prompt treatment, and abdominal symptoms are rare. In hereditary angioedema, there are recurrent swelling of skin and mucous membrane throughout the life. 
which is often associated with nausea, vomiting, colic, and urinary symptoms. Pharyngeal, laryngeal, and even bron bronchial involvement is seen and at many times significant. The lesions are seldom itchy, but occur spontaneously or after trauma. So such patients require very strict monitoring and prompt treatment. There are certain clinical variants like uh, Clarkson syndrome, which is also called as the systemic capillary leak syndrome. It's a rare syndrome and there is recurrent episode of exudation of fluid into various organs that include the skin. A non-pruritic chicken wire reticulate erythema or urticaria occur, angioedema has been reported. A severe shock-like state may ensue that eventually that and the eventual mortality is high. There is immunoglobulin G or IgG paraproteinemia in capillary leak syndrome. There is another related syndrome which is called as the Gleach syndrome. It is also known as episodic angioedema with eosinophilia, characterized by recurrent episode of angioedema associated with pyrexia, blood eosinophilia, and infiltration of dermis by eosinophilia. There is no evidence of systemic involvement or progression to cardiomyopathy. Each episode resolved with prednisolone treatment. During the attack, there is increased serum level of interleukin-5 and some cases interleukin-6 in the Gleach syndrome. Differential diagnosis of angioedema without wheel that include orofacial granulomatosis, any sort of dermatitis, cellulitis, or if involving the genital areas, idiopathic scrotal edema. Disease course and prognosis. The chronic mast cell mediator induced angioedema usually lasts for several months to year, and spontaneous resolution is the rule, as seen in other cases of urticarias. Hereditary angioedema is a lifelong problem with variations in activity corresponding to the environmental factors, lifestyle, drugs, especially the exogenous uh, estrogenism and ACE inhibitor and endogenous factors like puberty and pregnancy. The main risk of HAE is suffocation and death. Treatment of underlying B cell lymphoproliferative disorder may lead to resolution of type one acquired uh, C1 inhibitor deficiency. The ACE inhibitor induced angioedema remits after discontinuation of the drug, but may take six months to subside even after stopping the drugs. Investigations. Severe inflammatory disorders should be ruled out by checking, uh, sorry, se uh, severe inflammatory disorders should be uh, ruled out by checking C1 reactive protein, CRP, and uh, WBC count. Patient with frequent attacks or long-standing disease should be checked for any underlying cause. C4 complement is a good screening test for hereditary angioedema type 1 and type 2, especially during the attack. It should be less than 30% of the normal in affected patients. Measurement of functional C1 inhibitor is necessary to diagnose type 2 but this test is not readily available. Management of mast cell in mediator induced angioedema is essentially the same as for chronic idiopathic urticaria, except that oropharyngeal lesions may occur and cause great distress. The non sedating second generation H1 antihistamines are the first line treatment. They should be used on daily basis until spontaneous remission occurs. Higher than standard dose, that is up to four-fold dose, may be required to achieve sufficient protection. Omlazimab and TIgE is licensed in Europe and USA for the use of antihistamine refractory cases of chronic spontaneous urticaria and should be considered as a third-line therapy. Emergency treatment of hereditary angioedema. Since the attacks in hereditary angioedema occur spontaneously. 
recurrently and severely. H1 antihistamines, steroids, and epinephrine are or should always be available, but are usually ineffective for HAE or acquired C1 inhibitor deficiency. So such patients, the estrogen therapy like contraceptive pills should be avoided. Purified plasma drive C1 inhibitor given by bolus IV infusion for oropharyngeal or laryngeal edema and abdominal colic. The dose is 20 units per kg. Self-administration by patient at the first sign of attack is now encouraged. Symptom relief should be seen within 30 to 90 minutes. C1 inhibitor is also available as a recombinant product prepared from rabbits. Other therapy is Icatibant. It is a bradykinin receptor 2 antagonist and may be the treatment of choice if given a subcutaneous injection and has similar efficacy to C1 inhibitor concentrate. Ecalentide is a calicrin inhibitor and is available only in US. Fresh frozen plasma, FFP, containing C1 inhibitor are given in emergency if other products are unavailable. Short-term prophylaxis of hereditary angioedema, plasma drive C1 inhibitor concentrate should be given shortly before medical procedures involving trauma, especially dental work and intubation during general anesthesia. Anabolic steroids and plasma inhibitor may also be used for short-term prophylaxis, for example, 48 hours before and two to five days after dental surgery at the high dose ranges. Long-term prophylaxis of, long, of hereditary angioedema. Plasma drive C1 inhibitor replacement therapy where available is the pref preferable prophylactic treatment for patients with frequent attack. Twice weekly IV units, 1,000 units are sufficient in most patients. Attenuated anabolic drugs such as danazole or stanazole are often used in adults but not tolerated in women due to androgenetic side effects like menstrual irregularities, acne, and hirsutism. They stimulate the production of deficient inhibitor by liver under the control of remaining functioning C1 inhibitor allele. Usual starting dose is 100 to 200 milligram of stenazole, uh, uh, sorry, 100 to 100 milligram of denazole or 1 to 5 mg of stenazole. Liver ultrasound has been recommended every two years to screen for hepatocellular adenoma in patients with continuous treatment on with anabolic steroids. Epsilon, amino caproic acid, 12 to 18 gram daily, or the related plasma inhibitor trixamic acid, 2 to 4.5 gram daily have been found to help some patients, but are contraindicated in past history of thrombosis or inherited thrombophilia. The treatment of acquired C1 estrase inhibitor deficiency, Icatiband and C1 inhibitor are the treatment of choice. Denazole are helpful in some cases and may be helped by transamic acid and corticosteroids. Rituximab has been reported to give a long-lasting improvement. So I thank you for very patient listening.